Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, Jeremy Smith here, uh, continuing to take a look at the Sony NEX7. Uh, kind of continuing on from the previous part of this review, uh, I'm going to be taking a little bit closer look at all the all the controls on the camera. I'm definitely going to have to post a behind the scenes shot of how I have my camera set up now. I'm having to do gymnastics to <laughs> to work around everything anyways okay so taking a closer look let's see if we'll get refocused here taking a closer look um, <clears throat> on the top of course as I mentioned in part one there is a uh, standard uh, Sony slash Minolta style hot shoe on top here just has a little cover in there that comes out like this that goes away so on this you can mount uh, your standard um, Sony uh, Sony flashes, um, which is a very very nice feature. So no no more proprietary shoe like you have on the NEX 5N. Uh, you can actually put a real flash on this, and um, you know it is very nice if you uh, you know if you're using uh, one of Sony's flashes and you want it to take advantage of their wireless system, uh, you could put one of the put one of their flashes on there and have it act as a master. Um, you can also put a pocket wizard or other wireless system on here so you could actually use this uh, with studio lights and that sort of thing and uh, hopefully as more time goes on um, I'll get a chance to actually take this in the studio and shoot some models with it and, uh, and see how that goes so I'll definitely be taking advantage of that at some point um, you do have a built-in flash here uh, you just press this button right there and it pops up like that and you can see how, how it is here. So obviously not very, very powerful for this. Uh, you know, can't be very powerful with the, such a tiny little flash. Um, although I'm still glad that Sony included it. Um, it's certainly better than no flash at all. Sometimes you just don't want to take any additional accessories. So if you're trying to travel light, um, this can, can come in handy. Um, I've noticed that some other users have mentioned that, you know, you could bounce this if you want it to by taking it and holding it like this to kind of you know give you some bounce obviously that's only going to work if you're <clears throat> you know near or very very low ceiling and of course you're probably going to have to go to higher ISO settings in order to be able to take advantage of that you know probably something like uh, you know ISO 800 ISO 1600 or, or higher uh, just to get enough light since you're not dealing with a very powerful flash um, <clears throat> One thing that I really, really hate that they didn't include was the ability, well, at least one flash feature that I hate they, they didn't include was is the ability to have that flash act as a master for other Sony flashes. Um, on, on such an expensive camera, um, I mean, even, even Sony's entry-level um, SLT and, and DSLR cameras have had, the, have had that ability to fire remote flashes with their built-in flash so on this you know camera that's supposed to be the high end of their mirrorless cameras I can't imagine what they were thinking by not including that um, so that's something that's kind of a let down uh, <clears throat> moving on to the rest of the camera here of course you have your um, electronic viewfinder let's see, I'll go ahead and power this on You have your <clears throat> electronic viewfinder right over on this side. Um, so let's see if we can get a little closer to that. There you go. Okay, so this one, of course, is a is a OLED viewfinder, just like all of Sony's newer uh, SLT cameras. Um, it is very very good. Um, I do like the fact that that you can you know use the exposure simulation. So as you're adjusting your settings. Um, it makes it very very easy to see <clears throat> what your different ISO and f-stop and shutter speed adjustments are going to give you as far as exposure because as you adjust your settings which I'll show you on the screen here as an example you can see right now I'm changing my f-stop so as I go up towards f11 here you can see the screen get darker or if I were to change my shutter speed you notice that this has, it actually has a total of three dials. You have the two on top and then you have the one 
back here this right one right here in the full manual mode allows you to adjust your f-stop and the one over here allows you to adjust your shutter speed and then the rear by default is for your ISO but we'll get to that in a second but you can see how how that exposure simulation works of course it works very well uh, inside the uh, <coughs> inside the viewfinder as well so that's something I do like about it um, <coughs> there is also a proximity sensor over on this side so whenever you raise your eye to the viewfinder it automatically turns on the LED and turns off the rear screen. Um, this works out pretty well. I mean, it, there's many uh, cameras that have that feature already. Uh, so it's not really anything new on this particular camera. Um, <clears throat> I find myself turning that feature off on most cameras because since I wear glasses, a lot of times the frame of my glasses, you know, momentarily is near the center and I move a little bit and it goes away and the sensor gets confused and the screen's always going, going on and off. So I usually have a tendency to turn that off on on um, all my cameras but if you don't wear glasses it'll probably work out really well and of course there is there is a diopter adjustment right there for the viewfinder as well over on this side of the camera um, you know you have all your ports <clears throat> it is worth mentioning that Sony decided to put you know the uh, you know removable type eyelets on this uh, which is something that you typically see on on higher end DSLRs so they're obviously trying to make a statement about this SLT excuse me uh, this mirrorless camera um, by having that as well so you know kind of a kind of a nice little touch you have your ports right here um, they're behind these plastic covers I do like these covers by the way um, a lot of camera companies are finally starting to get smart about these things um, that flimsy rubber that stretches over time and gets all you know been out of shape Nikon's kind of uh, infamous for their rubber covers of cameras of the past so nice to see manufacturers doing something a little bit different <clears throat> up top here you have your HDMI connector uh, of course it's a mini type as you would imagine and then of course you have your USB below that you have <coughs> And I will note that, please note that it's a separate cover for this one, which is nice also. <clears throat> this is for your for your microphone adjustment. So that's kind of nice if you're shooting and you and you're using an external microphone, you know, you don't have to have all the other covers exposed. You can just expose that one area for the mic. And of course you can kind of see how just how thin this camera really is, which is quite impressive. <clears throat> I was very impressed with the uh, first uh, Sony mirrorless cameras because I was, I was impressed that they were able to implement a swiveling screen on such a tiny body.